Hey everyone, my name is Josh and welcome back to High Five Church History. So in last week's episode, we looked at Can You Prove the Bible is True Part 2? And the link to that video is going to be right above me. But today, we're going to start talking about the expansion of the early church and we're really going to focus on one of those key characters. So in Luke's Gospel, we see that he actually ends with the Ascension of Christ. But then Luke is going to pen another book called The Acts of the Apostles. In this book, Luke records the beginning of the early church and the expansion of Christianity into the Mediterranean world. Now, in the Acts of the Apostles, there are going to be really two key figures. First is going to be Peter, who covers from Acts 1 through 12, and Paul, which really covers Acts 13 through 28. So, in essence, we really want to focus on these two main characters, and today we're going to focus on Peter and the expansion of early Christianity. I'm going to separate this video into three different sections. It's going to be Peter before Jesus, Peter with Jesus, and Peter after Jesus. So let's go ahead and get started with Peter before Jesus. Now, what we know about Peter before Christ is very brief. Peter's birth name was actually Simon, and he comes from Bethsaida, a town by the Lake of Galilee. He was a fisherman along with his family. And that's a bulk of what we know about Peter before he actually meets Christ. Now, when he does meet Christ, then we begin to learn a lot more about him. So Andrew, his brother, actually introduces Peter to Jesus. And quickly, Simon, at the time, becomes the leader of the Twelve Apostles and is often their spokesman. He was one of the first individuals to testify that Jesus was the, Maju the Jewish Messiah, or we might use the term Christ, and he did so at Caesarea Philippi. Now, Jesus gives Simon his nickname of Peter. Peter means rock. Now, of course, Jesus and the apostles were speaking Aramaic at the time, so it actually would have been used by the term Cephas. You might have read that as well in the Gospels. Peter was very rash and temperamental. He, in fact, vowed he would not deny Jesus, but does so three times when the Romans arrest Christ shortly before his crucifixion. Peter is one of the very first people to meet Jesus after Jesus' resurrection. And Jesus affirms or reaffirms Peter's position as leader among the apostles. So that's really the bulk of what we see of Peter with Jesus. Now let's look at some information about Peter after Christ, after Christ ascends. This is really where Acts 1 through 12 picks up. First, we see that after Jesus' ascension, Peter oversees the appointment of the 12th apostle. And this apostle is going to replace Judas Iscariot, who of course had betrayed Christ and went out and hanged himself. He was also the chief preacher on the day that the Holy Spirit comes. That's the day of Pentecost. So he and John the Apostle were leaders of the early church as they disciplined Ananias and Sapphira for lying to the Holy Spirit and the church, and they also did much healing and preaching. They also took special interest in a mission to Samaria, which was a region north of Jerusalem. Now, Peter received a vision from God telling him to share the gospel with the Gentiles. Peter initially seems really hesitant with this command, but later at the Council of Jerusalem actually encourages the mission work of Paul to the Gentiles. King Herod Agrippa ruled over this area at the time, over the area of Israel, and he has Peter imprisoned. But somehow Peter miraculously escapes before his execution date. Now, much of Peter's later ministry, actually, we don't know a whole lot about. He may have worked in the region of Asia Minor. He may have visited Corinth. But we know that eventually he settles in Rome as one of the pastors in that city. Peter wrote First and Second Peter, which you can find at the near the end of your New Testament. And he's also the main source for Mark's gospel. More than likely, the Roman Emperor Nero murdered Peter during a period of Christian persecution in AD 64. So in today's video, we briefly went over the life of Peter, his life before Christ, with Christ, and after Christ. One question that we can ask from Peter's life and how church history relates to us is this. Has Jesus Christ changed our lives as well? When you look at Peter, he's someone who's hot-headed, temperamental, not very good qualities for a leader, but then after he meets the resurrected, risen Christ, suddenly his life completely changes. He becomes a solid leader. He becomes someone who confidently proclaims the teachings of Jesus. You see him as someone whom the early church very much depends on as they continue to grow in the Mediterranean world. Now, our lives may not have this kind of change that we see in Peter, but there certainly should be some. Church history is a record of changed lives, changed lives because of Jesus. We can ask that same question for ourselves. Thanks again for watching. I'm going to ask that you like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and please leave your comments below. Thank you so much for watching, and I can't wait to see you next week as we continue to high-five church history.